how often do you get to be in a lava tube? My research can be seen as intangible because I can't touch it like this rocks, right? And I'm not taking a sample, like a physical sample. People often question what they can't see and touch for themselves. And if they can't see it, they don't believe it. And part of what I love about astrophysics is that we can't go to the stars. We can't collect stuff in a container, but light is information. So we're getting just as real information as if you pulled the, a rock off the ground. I am an observer of forming stars and trying to understand the chemistry involved in what's happening there. I'll be looking at clouds of gas, trying to understand these mysteries of planet formation. The fundamental questions that drive my research are immense unknowns that no one person can answer. How do planets form? How does life form? How did we get here? These kind of mind-boggling questions can keep me up at night, thinking about this edge of what is possible out in the universe. What keeps me up at night in relation to the work I do is the question of if there's anything out in the universe like us. Really, I'm interested in the chemistry that's going on from where we are to where the center of our galaxy is and trying to understand all these different types of environments where planets could form. This is my part of observing the natural world and my natural world is beyond our solar system. We can never travel to these places, so our tools are bring the starlight to us, and these are the big telescopes that we use. The telescope I'm using now is Keck Observatory, and tonight I'll be observing some massive stars across our galaxy. You didn't give me a lay? No, I didn't, because <laughs> I don't have one, and he didn't provide, it was all in my head. He said, uh, do you want, I said, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. But I love going to the summit. It's one of my favorite places on Earth. Scientists all over the world want to get time on these telescopes. It's one of the best observing locations in the world. How high is the summit? It's almost 14,000 feet. Whoa! You don't appreciate how big they are until you get here. Oh my god. So this is the primary mirror that is made of those 36 hexagonal segments, which you can see, yeah. they're each one like a honeycomb. This is the mirror that we use to capture all the light. We're gonna point this to the galactic center. That's this is the coded. coolest sentence I've ever heard, I think. It's, we're gonna point this at the galactic center. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get light from the <laughs> awesome. center of the galaxy. Yeah. We're gonna be looking at some forming stars. For one night, we're gonna be in charge of all this and being in charge of the science for this one night and yeah. using this amazing instrument, and that's so awesome. This is like a spaceship in a way, but it, instead of bringing us to space, it brings space to us. I really do feel like my research illustrates this kind of cosmic connectedness. Molecules on Earth are made of the same stuff as molecules around these stars. Molecules involved in our solar system forming could have come and formed our planet and, and those exact molecules could be in our bodies now. We are connected in very fundamental ways of origins when we look out into space. And I'm using a telescope and that's my window into what's happening in the system as a whole. What's going on to possibly make planets or not planets and maybe it's not conducive to planet formation. Where do we fit in a context of planet formation? This is the origin question of how we got here. We have to have a K filter in to do the telescope focus. Okay. There you go. Yeah, you know, the webcams look great. Yeah, for weather. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a great very night. Clear. Relative, relative humidity is quite low. But we're ready to go. 
uh, Jeff Blake. He's at Caltech, and he's running, doing the observations with me. He just waved hello. Hello, <laughs> Jeff. We're moving where you are. We're, we're going to another address. We're moving our ship, mm -hmm. which is Keck. It's cool. You can see it, like, mm -hmm. moving. And the stars become lines. There it is. That, that big, bright light is your first target star. And this is showing how much of the light is coming through. There's a nice, bright star without the life of a scientist. When you ask people how often they go to the field, it's a small percentage of their time going physically collecting the data, and it's usually the most exciting thing they do. Carolyn, just a heads up, after this, we will go to GCS3, so object five in the list, please. Carolyn, is she gone? Hello? She left. I think she stepped out. Stepped how do we get to the other object? If you were going to make a 90-minute film to represent the scientific process, you'd be showing people checking their emails, a lot of sitting at a computer screen, not getting a result. How about showing where you had fog all night and you flew to Hawaii and you didn't get to observe it at all? That's happened. That is part of the whole process. You don't have an exciting day often. You don't make discoveries every day or week, and you often fail. That's most of science. It can be monotonous, it can be drudgery, but at the end of the day, it's exciting because you've got these questions you're helping to answer. It's almost 5.15 a.m. We've been here for seven, maybe eight hours, uh, wandering through the Milky Way with the, the Keck telescope. And, um, and focusing in on different stars um, close to the center of the galaxy. Rachel's signature of choice is carbon monoxide. It is interesting. I like, I haven't had any data from the Galactic Center before, so this is cool. actually exciting. And we're looking at, this is 20,000 light years away. The cloud of gas around a forming star is made up of lots of molecules, one of which is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is the exhaust that comes out of your car, and it's toxic, and we don't, you don't want to breathe that stuff, but it's actually a really important molecule to study in our galaxy. Carbon is a key element to understanding how planets form and understanding how molecules we need for life are formed. You don't have that full picture well understood. The data we get from the telescope open up a window into something that might be going on. How can I, as a small person, answer a question about the cosmos and origin? You have a puzzle with a million or a billion pieces, and we've got one piece. What a great night. No naps, boy, are we troopers. We've observed all night, we've got nine stars and it's awesome and we've got all yeah. these great new targets. We have such a great survey now. So did you get everything that you wanted? Oh, everything and more in fact. Everything we and got, more? We got all the data including a lot of our back, including some backup stars. It was cool. awesome. It was a great night. I like studying things that are much bigger than myself. And things, something that I can't touch because that's otherworldly and that's amazing. It transports me from an ordinary existence to something that I find more extraordinary, and that is studying something completely beyond myself, which is the work I do. So have you ever seen flowing lava before? No. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> this is so cool! <laughs> Oh my god, oh my this god. is just, oh. You know, it's like the same thing. It's like we can't go to space, but we can use telescopes and we can come here. Yeah. And it feels it's like, like bringing space to us. Bringing space to us. Yeah. And this process makes me feel the same way I felt like on Mauna Kea in Keck. Yeah. In a way, it's like Absolutely. looking at origins in space, origins in rocks, and this is an origin of our planet. For me, the biggest question is, how do we get here? Are we alone? We may never have this answer. It may be beyond our understanding. We can't probe every corner of the universe. I mean, I can't predict what I'm going to find. It's just a gut feeling that I have about it.